Hi everyone, I'm going to continue reading Runaway Ralph by Beverly Cleary. We are starting a new chapter. Chapter 8 is called Ralph Strikes a Bargain. Let's see what's going to happen to Ralph now. Lena was the one who discovered that Ralph was missing. The morning after Ralph's escape, she came running ahead of Aunt Jill to the craft shop. She stopped short when she looked through the screen door and saw the litter of nails, seeds, and plastic strewn about the work table and on the floor. Aunt Jill! Aunt Jill! she shrieked, even though Aunt Jill was directly behind her. <gasps> Burglars have been here and somebody stole Garf's mouse! Ralph crouched out of sight behind a fluff of dust in the angle where the brace joined the studding, and he heard the campers coming. There's a little picture of Ralph hiding. Garf! Garf! called Lena. Your mouse is gone! Somebody stole your mouse! Hey, look at this mess! said Pete. The mouse cage is all bent, observed Garf. A thief wouldn't have to bend the cage to open it. First a watch, now a mouse, said another camper. A thief is in our midst, cried Lena, eager for excitement and mystery. All right, boys and girls, let's pick up the nails and seeds and roll up the plastic. Aunt Jill's voice was calm. This crisis was not the first she had had at Cat Happy Acres, nor would it be the last. Then Ralph heard Garf's voice saying, Look at that hole in the screen door. It's big enough for a cat to squeeze through. Good thinking, Garf, said Ralph to himself. He had picked up this phrase from the many school teachers who had stayed at the Mountain View Inn while on their summer vacations. I'll bet cat so got my mouse, said Garf adding sadly, and he was such a good mouse, too. Ralph could not help being pleased by this compliment, and a little sad, too. Of course he was a good mouse. He had known that fact all along, but hearing himself spoke of in the past made him feel that the world would have been a sadder place without him. Garf, you're a good detective, said Aunt Jill. Catso must be the guilty one. Aunt Jill, you don't think Catso ate the mouse, do you? Lena was awed by the enormity of such a crime. Oh, I hope not, for Garf's sake, said Aunt Jill. Well, what about my sake, thought Ralph indignantly. Well, we'd better look around, said Aunt Jill. Perhaps the mouse is hiding someplace. And instantly, a mouse hunt was organized. Butterfly nets were seized, jars and boxes moved, craft materials lifted. Here, mousy, mousy, called Lena. Here, mousy, mousy. As if I would come running, thought Ralph, huddled behind a dusty cobweb in the dark shadows. Oh, I guess he's gone said Garf at last. The first and the probably the last mouse I'll ever have. Garf, I'm putting you in charge of repairing the hole, said Aunt Jill. Get a piece of screen and some wire from Uncle Steve and we'll make sure Catso won't come in here again. We wouldn't want him to annoy Chum. And at that point, the fur along Ralph's spine began to tingle. There's Catso now, cried Lena. Ralph felt the slam of the screen door jar the building as Lena ran out. Bad cat, bad cat, Catso, bad cat, he heard her shout. The scolding did Ralph's heart good. Later that morning, after his writing lesson, Garf returned with a piece of screen and some wire to repair the hole. His work was frequently interrupted as campers left the craft shop and drifted off to other activities. When Aunt Jill left, Ralph came down from his hiding place in a series of leaps. 
Through the screen door, he watched Garth sitting on this step, weaving the wire patch to the screen with a piece of thin wire before he said, Say, Garf, uh, about my motorcycle. And startled, Garf looked up from his work. You're, you're alive? His obvious pleasure was most gratifying to Ralph. Oh, I thought Katzo got you. Well, how come you believed Katzo got me when you wouldn't believe Katzo stole the watch? demanded Ralph. I can run and jump, you know, and a watch can't. It just isn't logical for a cat to steal a watch, Garf insisted. If I show you where the watch is, will you believe me? asked Ralph. And with a look of interest, Garf sat back on his heels. However, he said, I don't want to have anything to do with that watch. I don't want to be seen near it or people will start saying I took it again. Most everyone's forgotten about it and I want to keep it that way. You don't have to go near it, said Ralph. Just watch me. Flattening himself, he squeezed under the screen door. He jumped down the steps and ran out into the bamboo leaves. Suddenly, all bamboo leaves looked alike. Which leaf was hiding the watch? Ralph did not know. He looked under one leaf and then the next, and he heard Garf mutter, Huh! and returned to his work. Over by one of the lodges, Lena shouted, Bad cat! Bad cat! Ralph pushed some leaves aside and he crawled under the others. Where was that watch anyway? There was no telling how many leaves had fallen since Katzo had dropped the watch. Ralph crawled deeper and deeper into the leaves and was finally rewarded by the touch of metal against his paw. Next, Ralph grasped the buckle on the leather strap and he tugged. The watch was heavier than he had expected, but it slid across the smooth inside surface of the leaf. Ralph waded up through the leaves, pulling with all of his strength and at last emerged, dragging the watch behind him. See, he said, I told you I knew where it was. Well, what do you know? Garf sat down on the step of the craft shop. You really did. How did you get the watch there? I told you, said Ralph impatiently. Katzo picked it up in his mouth. He carried it out of here. He batted it around a while and he finally dropped it where it slid under a leaf. Uh, you know, I believe you're telling the truth, said Garf with wonder in his voice. Of course I'm telling the truth, Ralph was indignant. But what does it do? But what good does it do me? Asked Garf. You know I can't return it, and if I said Katzo stole it, people would laugh. This moment was the one Ralph had been waiting for. First, he pulled some bamboo leaves over the watch to hide it before he faced Garf. <sighs> All right, let's talk business, he said. I return the watch and clear your name and you give me back my motorcycle. And from the trampoline, Ralph heard Lena say as she bounced, Bad dog, Sam! You're supposed to be a watchdog! She stopped bouncing and began to scold Sam. You're a watchdog! Why didn't you watch that? what that catso was doing? Why did you let that catso get that poor little mouse? Garf thought a while before he said, Why do you want the motorcycle? The ground is pretty much uneven around here. Well, why do you want it? countered Ralph. You're too big to ride it. It's a mouse-sized, not boy-sized. Well, I want it because I like to think about motorcycles, said Garf. I push it back and forth and think about riding a motorcycle when I grow up. I want it to ride, said Ralph. Now, back to the Mountain View Inn. I want 
to go home. Okay, friends, that's where we're going to end today. We are in the middle of chapter eight, Ralph Strikes a Bargain. Done, done, done. Have a good day, guys, and I'll see you later.